Make America's Mountains. One range helped put many of our earliest states on the map. The Appalachians are our oldest mountains. They were formed 350 million years ago by colliding tectonic plates. Once higher than the Himalayas, the mountains were worn down by wind and weather. But they were still a serious obstacle and the first real border of our states. The Appalachian Mountains are not particularly high in elevation. But they're quite rugged. They're straight up and down. In fact, one of the curious things about it is that if you were traveling from the Atlantic coast to the Pacific coast in, say, the mid-19th century... The steepest climbs you would encounter would be in the Appalachians, not in the Rocky Mountains. Mother Nature built this massive barrier, but she also created a workaround at the place where three states meet, Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. I'm here in Middlesboro, Kentucky. At the western boundary of the Cumberland Gap, this is a very proud city. It just celebrated its 100th birthday. But there's something very weird about this place. I mean, something truly unusual. The town was formed by a meteorite. A meteorite? A crater. A crater. A meteor that fell from outer space. It did. It had actually created a crater within the mountains. All the mountains, that's what's pushed up all the mountains is the, is the meteor. Flashback, though, 300 million years. A chunk of space rock 1,500 feet wide hurtled toward the Earth. The impact took place. It would have, essentially, there would have been a major explosion. Uh, bigger than anything that you're you're used to seeing as far as uh, nuclear bombs going off. It leaves a crater three miles wide. Ground zero of that meteor crash. Today, it's a golf course. Now, are you ever nervous that another meteor might come by and strike this area? No. All right. You get to, you get to be my age, you don't worry about that stuff. So. Are we safe? We are now. Okay. It's a good thing we were around then. Long after that meteor hit, its crater would help open the American frontier. Today, you can literally see some of the states it helped shape. So this is what's called the pinnacle. You can kind of see three states from here. You can see Virginia, where the sun is coming up this morning. And in front of me is Tennessee, and this is Kentucky. And below me is the Cumberland Gap. The Cumberland Gap, the only natural opening in the Appalachian Mountains for 200 miles. It became a major gateway to the West, thanks to a man by the name of Boone. Daniel Boone. What's that like, living in a town where with Daniel Boone was coming through here? Well, uh... Pretty, pretty significant. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. See, they come through the mountains up there in well, that direction. Gap, they wouldn't come direction. That direction. Yeah, in the Cumberland Gap area. We were looking for Daniel Boone. Well, we, we, pa we passed him. You did on the way up here? You didn't see him? I did not see Daniel Boone, nor did I see any of the, the men who were in his party that were coming through here. Did you see any of them? No, I just saw Dan. <laughs> Is that what you call him, Dan? Yeah. In 1775, Daniel Boone and his men cleared the Cumberland Gap. Then Boone leads the first settlers through, along old Native American trails. But it wasn't easy. I think most people think of the Cumberland Gap as a giant valley in which men, women, equipment moved westward but it's really it's very small isn't it how oh, it is yeah it's just a just a notch you'd be surprised it literally um when you get down into the gap itself 
it's it's literally just a, a trail that's not much wider than, than the area that you and I are standing in. It. And if the trail is only this wide, how did they move things through there? Because of the nature of the trail, uh, folks literally had to make decisions. You know, they had to, to bring what they could carry. They, they literally had to, to live off the land as they traveled through the gap. In just 35 years, a quarter of a million pioneers marched through here. It wasn't long before they wanted their own states. Originally, this land west of the Appalachians was part of Virginia and North Carolina. But when the first settlers came in 1775, they tried to create a 14th colony. They even had a name for it, Transylvania, Latin for after the woods. But Virginia wouldn't let that land go, not for another 17 years. I think it was largely the efforts of Thomas Jefferson saying to them, hey, Virginian, by the way, you've got to let this go, you've got to let this go, you've got to let this go. So they did. In 1792, the state of Kentucky was born. Settlers carved another new state out of North Carolina, Tennessee. Today, that history is hidden in the map. And that's how a meteor crash in the mountains and Daniel Boone helped shape four states. Oh, and the 18th hole. Sorry. How's your game? Uh, not good. What are you talking about with your buddies when you're out here? I'm just curious. I could tell you more off camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nature can't help my golf game. But here in Appalachia, she continues to shape states and the people that live in them. Many states, in fact. Maybe more than you think. Are you familiar with the Appalachian Mountains? Yep. Okay. Now, do you know what other states border the Appalachian Mountains? All 18 of them. 18 Appalachian yeah. states? Border the Appalachian Mountains. Okay. Well, let's see. Ohio, West Virginia. Maybe Tennessee? Alabama? Mm -hmm. Virginia. And Maryland? Florida? Or is it Georgia? Were they... Let's, let's head up north. Uh, New York. Pennsylvania. New Jersey, maybe. A little bit. Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Do you go further north into New Hampshire and Vermont? Maybe. Did they go all the way up to Maine, even? You're missing one state in the northeast. Mm -hmm. The next state. The, uh, okay. Um. Connecticut. That's it. That's it? Yeah. No. That's 18. Thousands of pioneers crossed the Appalachians, but others chose to settle here. Many were Scots-Irish, and this rugged terrain may have reminded them of home. They were tough, self-sufficient, and cut off from the rest of the world. <laughs> 